You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, The Goodman Factor, True Weight Solutions, The 100 Year Lifestyle, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Ultimate Entrepreneur Opportunity, and Cairo Pro Accounting. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 234 of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. I am your co-host, Luke Millette. Here's your host, Jim Chester. So in linear fashion, 234, there are some takeaways from this for your customer service and stay tuned for the one, two, three of those. All right, this is the second iteration. Um, This is episode what number, Luke? 234. And uh, we have Dr. Kelly Henry coming in for his second round of the Cairo Hustle podcast. Welcome to our show. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. So I did I did so bad the first go around. You gave me a second chance. I think that's how this works. Is that what happened? Everyone gets a second chance. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Actually, we, re- we realized how great of a job you're doing supporting the chiropractic profession. And we wanted to feature you again, because we know that you're doing great work and teaching people some lost arts um, of customer service. And you're opening up people's perception of what they can do to really help their business right now. And I think that goes across the board, not just chiropractic related, but it goes across the board to all businesses. So anybody watching this episode is going to get some takeaways when it comes to actually working in their local communities and doing great work And you being a chiropractor, 19 years, um, you know what it's like to grow a business, to bring on people and train them and to build success for not only yourself, but other people. So let's just jump right into the project that you're on right now. And I'll let you take the the lead on this one. Absolutely. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I'm I'm fully involved in helping businesses like you said, uh, get get a grasp on the lost art of customer service and improving that as a way to grow and benefit and make their business more successful. Um, when I first retired back in 2018, I was I was and when we did our first interview, I was solely working uh, working with chiropractors, really in practice management. Customer service was part of what I was teaching them, and then in 2019, I made a shift pivoted a little bit, decided to just to niche down into the customer service realm. That's what I was going to teach and be very exclusive in teaching and coaching and consulting on. And then I was going to broaden my reach to who I worked with. So outside of chiropractors, still work with chiropractors, but really any service-based industry is a, is fair game for me to work with. So I recently just launched uh, my first book, uh, define and deliver exceptional customer service. Actually, it launched just last week, so I'm excited about that. Just a very simple, simplistic book that has uh, great information, principles, rules, actions that chiropractors or other business owners can grasp onto, really implement immediately, and see a dramatic effect in their perception of customer service, which obviously will have an effect on the success of their business. Um, If people want to go preemptively jump on this and buy it and uh, review it for you, um, how do they do that right now? You can go to my website, drkellyhenry.com. So drkellyhenry.com. There's a big picture of the book on the top of the website. Just just click on that. It'll take you to Amazon. Uh, Take you to Amazon and you can order from uh, from Amazon. Yeah, I think that that's a really good thing to do on these interviews is to preemptively close people before the end, because if you don't make it all the way to the end, we'll ask you again where people can go for your book. But I think it's really cool that people can jump in right now and go over to your page and uh, download the book or purchase the book and uh, give a review right away. So um, just want to stoke the fire a little bit for you. I appreciate that. And it's a it's an easy read. It's a simple read. It's only about 150 pages long. Not a lot of fluff. That's not my personality. I just got to the point, gave some great information. And like I mentioned, it's it's simple stuff that if you'll grab a business owner, a chiropractor, whoever's listening, they'll grab hold of it and start implementing. It can make a huge difference in their business. So I know it's been quite a while since we last had a chat and uh, we just kind of want to get caught up to speed. Um, 
has anything not gone how you expected it to recently? And if so, what have you learned from it? Yeah, I've been several things that go up to up to expectations, you know, and kind of all of 2020 for all of us, probably things didn't go at least part of things didn't go to expectations. Um, yeah, just getting the word out um, and marketing um, has been has been an interesting challenge for me. Uh, you know, I'm there's a lot of theories and a lot of ways you can market. And I've read and studied and done many things. And uh, the line of business I'm in now you know, certain things work, certain don't, don't obviously. And that, that that's true for any business, obviously. Um, so I've had to balance some things out and and uh, tried some things and they didn't work and pivoted to new things. So it's been interesting um, doing a lot of emailing right now. Email is still alive. So if people don't believe that, I I would uh, I would disagree with them. Email is still alive and, and still works quite well. And that's that's what's helped me a lot. The network marketing, LinkedIn marketing, social media, you know, the whole the whole gamut. And so we're just narrowing down what really works for me right now and and uh, taking hold of that. Yeah, I think you're so spot on. You know, we've all seen the shift. We've all experienced something um, within our personal lives, our our communities, our businesses. And I think that that's really the part of who we are right now and who we were in 2020. And I think we have to take what we've learned and move forward with all of that information and all those experiences and shift to a better version. I really believe, you know, after getting to know you over the past couple of years, that the power of one is so essential to something like you're doing. Getting one good customer with one good, you know, experience is going to change the trajectory of the next referral for you. And it's a lot like the chiropractic business. Once you get one good person and you learn how to nurture that person and take care of them, it has a an effect on that community. It has an effect on that family. And I think that that's really what you have the potential to do with what you're doing right now is to learn from what didn't go right, but to <laughs> keep, keep on going with proper marketing etiquette and learning what can work. And it's that one thing that will eventually turn into the the major thing that could change the whole trajectory of this this agenda that you're on and this business that you're um, that you're a part of. So, I think that being somewhat vulnerable on these interviews is a part that makes us uh, more real than ever, and it's something that we can't really script for things not going well. So it's important sometimes to have those tough conversations. So <laughs> I appreciate your willingness to share. Hey, not a problem. You know, not everything's rosy and and sugar coated. You know, unicorns. You know, life is is difficult at times. And being an entrepreneur and in business, as you guys know, it's you know, there's some tough spots, there's some low spots. And fortunately for me, and, I, and I'm I'm sure you guys have somewhat of the same attitude. Is it's not if I'm going to be successful with this, it's when. And I I never look at anything as 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 failure as final. I look as failure as feedback. So, okay, this didn't work. Well, that's all right. I learned from that. What can I do different? What can I do different in that arena? Or maybe I need to shift and pivot from that, you know, from that marketing scheme or whatever the case may be. But I just collect feedback, feedback and feedback, learn, pivot more intelligently, move forward from the from the issues or the problems or the the failure I had. And again, I, I'm, I'm not going to quit because it's not if, it's always when I'm going to make this thing work and be more successful. And I think that that's a really important thing to you know spend some time with because when you had conversations with me off camera, I was really raw. And I'm like, look, man, <laughs> you don't want to do that. You want to do this. And if you think of it about this way, it's not going to go the direction you want it to go. So I was very open book to you. And very uh, honest with you about what I see as the trends in the profession and how I saw what you're going into uh, wanting to accomplish. And maybe I gave you some insight that would be helpful, but I, I was really honest with you. Absolutely. I, you know, that that's the thing I love about you, Jim, is you uh, you don't sugarcoat things. Just tell it like it is. And that, I appreciate that. That's how I like it. And that's that to me, that's what helps the most. Well, I know I didn't have uh, anything to to gain from it except for helping you. And well, if I could help people with honesty, I think that that's something that we all need to do a little bit better. Absolutely. And, uh, 
we all we all can uh, support each other with at least a good word and uh, a little bit of passion. So that's what I had to offer to you. Um, let's turn this conversation back a little bit more to chiropractic. All right. And uh, this is a, this is something I'm really um, passionate about is how can we make the profession better? But what have you seen over the past decade as to been the trend that you've seen as the most important thing to happen for chiropractic? Well, um, you know, there's a huge trend of practice integration, um, you know, bringing in obviously physical therapists, but, you know, DOs or nurse practitioners or uh, those items. And, and I feel like that's a, that's a good thing. Um, as long as the chiropractic philosophy and foundation is center in that office. Um, so some of those offices are maybe not quite as solid on that, but I don't mind that integration. Um, in my practices, you know, I always talk to my patients about health. And that, you know, my adjustment wasn't going to make them completely healthy. That's just not how it works. It's a piece of helping them regain health and staying health and, and influencing their nervous system to be better, uh, to have better health. But I wasn't the end all to be all. So, uh, you know, I always communicated that. And so to me, that's something that these integrated clinics are really good at that, hey, we can adjust you and we want to make you healthy through the spinal adjustment. But you know, sometimes you, you know, you have a high blood pressure, or you've torn a rotator cuff or, you know, not, not, not that I'm advocating medications or those type of things, but it's okay to get checked out by another practitioner and why not have that benefit the, the chiropractor or the particular clinic. So to me, I feel like that's a good trend as long as that chiropractic foundation stays center in those clinics. Yeah. And I think that now we're learning that a team, whether it's a team that puts on a production or a team that has a, you know, goes out and plays a, a sport. Like you have to have each person that does their specialty. And I think that that has really um, had an influence on chiropractic as they realize that there's a team of people that take care of the human body and the chiropractor is the vitalist, the chiropractor is the, the health lane. And I think that there are, you know, um, opportunities to do co-management for people's cases. And I think that that's what people learned a long time ago when it, it became like a PI case. Well, you had to co-manage a case with some other practitioners in order to get a positive outcome for somebody that was severely injured. And I think that that's the part that we have to come back to is to realize that people don't come in with the classic slip and fall. <laughs> People come in with bodies that aren't eating right. They're under massive amounts of stress. They're super toxic. They're in metabolic syndrome. They're dealing with cardiovascular conditions. They're dealing with diabetes, diabetic conditions. They're dealing with this long laundry list of things that they need to focus on. And one of those components is chiropractic. My only concern moving forward into that direction is I'm just concerned that the cupboard is a little bare for actual people to facilitate those teams and to understand the chiropractic philosophies is when they join those teams. And it's hard to change the philosophy of a medical minded person into a chiropractic branded facility when they're indoctrinated with that knowledge of you are a medical minded practitioner. So to bring somebody out of a cupboard and say, you're going to come work on our team um, it's, I think is a huge part of education that needs to happen in order to integrate those types of practitioners successfully. I, I agree. So, um, and it's, you know, I used to tell my patients that, you know, you need a chiropractor, obviously you need a dentist, you need an orthopedic doctor, you know, an oncologist, whatever the case may be, they all fit their different pieces and specialty. There's nothing wrong with that. So um, I'm a piece of the puzzle. Like you mentioned, that's, you know, that teamwork, bringing that team under one roof. There's nothing wrong with that. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about who some of your heroes and mentors are. Who's inspired you to kind of become the person that you are today? They could be living or passed on, of course. You bet. My my chiropractic mentors, uh, I have two of them. Uh, both of uh, I was 
coached in both their organizations. One of them you, you all know quite well, Dr. Fred Schofield. Uh, he, he's a trend, tremendous mentor to me, and I coached with him for several years. Um, or I don't know how long, but anyways, I coached with him for a time period. And, you know, just he, he's kind of like you, Jim, just doesn't sugarcoat anything. It's just straightforward. Give it to you straight. This is how you need to do it and whatnot. And again, that's what I responded to best. So I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed Dr. Schofield and his, his knowledge and his direction that he helped me steer. Um, Dr. Tom Owens in, uh, down in Chattanooga, he's since passed on, but he was a tremendous mentor. I, I worked with his organization, uh, his consulting group for for several years, um, and actually they're they're the ones that really put me on a the proper foundation to create some significant success in my business. But um, just his his philosophy and his business mindset and. And and he was one to not sugarcoat, just be very straightforward too. And so those two, uh, those two docs played a huge part in in my chiropractic success. A um, couple success mentors that I've actually never met, but I've listened and read and studied and watched videos on them. Uh, Brian Tracy, uh, you may have heard of him. He tremendous uh, sales guru, success guru. Just love his stuff. Tremendous, tremendous information that I've utilized through the years that, um, again, has helped me be more successful. And then another one is Grant Cardone. Uh, may have heard of him, too. Um, in fact, you can, you can see a couple of his books right right behind me here. So the 10X Rule and Be Obsessed or Be Average is one of my favorite books, period. Not just his, but any book I've ever read. In fact, I've read it five or six times. And uh, again, he's one that just say it straight and um, be very straightforward on on life and and be focused and dialed in. And and the book I just mentioned, Be Obsessed or Be Average, you know, he explains that you can be obsessed about every area in your life. You know, you don't have to be obsessed just about business to the decline of your family or your relationships or anything else. You can be obsessed about your your family and your faith in your business. It's just having that focus at the appropriate times. And I, I uh, resonated with that book quite well. So. Yeah, I think you're spot on. And I think some of the people you mentioned as mentors is there's a saying that um, those that get these positions of influence, much responsibility is necessary. And I think that when people realize that, that the, <clears throat> when you say like he's a guru and he's done this and that means that that person has to show up that way. And there's a lot of responsibility on the shoulders of Brian Tracy and Fred Schofield that um, that's also a position that people earn. And there's a lot of uh, position that comes along with that and a lot of responsibility to um, show up the right way and to help people and to live on with that legacy. I mean, when you decide that you're going to be obsessed or be average, you have to really decide that, you're going to find things about yourself or what your highest priorities are, and you're going to have to really develop those. And if you don't develop those the way that you want them to, then they'll take over you. And the things that you don't delegate will be the things that you loathe. If you don't <laughs> learn what you like to do, then you'll do things that you are not finding value in. And eventually that could go to the chiropractic profession. You know, you might be a better clinic director than a, a practitioner. And I think that that's a hard conversation for the chiropractors too, is because they look at their colleagues, if they're not out there, you know, doing side postures and toggles, then they're not a real chiropractor. <laughs> and they kind of like say, Hey, you're not a, you're not a chiro anymore if you're not doing those things. But I think that some people are better suited at running empires of management clinics and teaching others how to be successful. So we always have to think about what does the trench mean? and who's in the trenches, and how can we make sure that people feel a part of the chiropractic family rather than saying, hey, you do it that way, you're not doing it the right way. Yeah, I agree. And that's something that, you know, that I struggled with. Uh, speaking of, you know, figuring out, you know, what I was good at and what I really needed to, to focus on. Um, I was like a lot of chiropractors, I chased shiny, the shiny new object, the shiny new equipment, the shiny new procedure, the shiny new supplement, you know. And finally, when I, you know, through some coaching and 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 some 
serious thought, I finally figured out that, hey, this is what I need to narrow down into. This is what I'm good at. I'm not the best at decompression. I'm not the best at trying to sell the weight loss, but I'm really good at communicating subluxation, spinal health, you know, reoccurring adjustments and and just dialed into that. And that's when my when my practice exploded, when I exploded, when I finally dialed into what I was good at and and stayed true to it. So I know we kind of touched on this topic earlier, but I kind of want to take a bit of a deeper dive with you, if that's okay. Absolutely, Luke. So in the past year, 2020, we all had to make lots of changes. What are some of the things specifically that used to work for you, but lately you've had to pivot away from them because it just wasn't working the same way? Do you have any specific examples? I do. You know, marketing has been, you know, we already talked about this a little bit, has been a little more of a challenge, but particularly to your to your question is, you know, I, I can market to the whole United States. Well, I, I didn't take into account that there's a lot of businesses that had to slow down, shut down, and were, you know, were subject to their, you know, their state's government or whatnot, whatnot for COVID restrictions. And so have, you know, had to dial things back and then be very careful and very specific who I was marketing to. Because the last thing you want to do is market to a business and have to get the, you know, get a message from them. Hey, I'm shut down. I can't do anything. You know, that just breaks your heart and, and it's terrible to do, but had to be very careful with that. It's just, it wasn't just broad, you know, broad market anymore. We needed to be careful and be, be a little more diligent in who we were marketing to and, and uh, being a little more specific that way. And how, how do you suggest that other, uh, other marketers niche down their targeting right now? Like, have you learned any tricks or tips you could pass on to our listeners who might be struggling with the same problem? There's, you know, there's a lot of different ways. We used link, LinkedIn pretty effectively for this where we could narrow down searches. LinkedIn has specific parameters that you can dial dial into um, to get those parameters down where you're, you're going to be you you should be pretty well within the niche you want, but also being care, careful of if you're trying to avoid a, a city or a state or, you know, an industry in that particular area that uh, does, doesn't work. So LinkedIn worked quite well for me in that regard. And you said uh, earlier on before we jumped on here that you've been doing quite a bit of podcasting and you've been a guest on other people's shows. How has that helped you? Several ways, obviously, you know, spreading the word, being on different shows. Um, in fact, I've been on in the last since about Thanksgiving, and I've been on thirty-three shows, I guess, somewhere around that neighborhood. So quite a bit. Uh, just the exposure um, has been great. Um, some of the shows had bigger audiences, some didn't. Didn't really matter. Um, for me, I'm, I'm always wanted to add some value, give some value. So th- this is certainly a platform that I, I can do that on. I love the comfort conversational style um, of podcasts where it's not me just spewing, you know, my inf- information. I've done a lot of, uh, of uh, talks to like rotary clubs, service clubs in the, the Dallas area where I live over the last year. And, you know, it was okay, but I, I, again, it was just spewing my information to an audience that was, may probably wasn't real interested in it. So just didn't feel as effective. So podcast fills that for me where I feel like I'm being more effective and then being more conversational in it. And then also, you know, just being real here, it's, you know, when you do 30 some podcasts, it gives you a lot of confidence in, in speaking and speaking your information. And, and so I can, you know, I've just noticed my, my confidence level, go up dramatically. Um, so that's, you know, that's obviously been, been a great uh, factor that, uh, has, uh, been, I, you know, I guess I knew that in the back of my mind, but, uh, seeing it now as I'm going through it has been a tremendous benefit for me. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is brought to you by Imaging Services. Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, The Goodman Factor, True Weight Solutions, The 100-Year Lifestyle, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, 
Ultimate Entrepreneur Opportunity and Cairo Pro Accounting. Let's hustle. Well, as you went through that journey of being on 30 different shows over the past uh, couple months here, um, what would be some of your uh, takeaways to other people? Why, um, I guess, podcast medium is growing so quickly and why other people should be um, starting their own, number one, um, but why it's so important to build that that larger community. Because as we noticed, as you've mentioned a, a couple of times, people's businesses have uh, not all across the board grown since this pandemic. But I think that a lot of people are moving more quickly into the digital space. And these types of uh, situations are going to be more important going into the rest of this year. So I guess talk, talk a little bit about the format of podcasting and, and why you think other people should start investigating that path. You bet. Well, you know, from a, from a guest standpoint, you know, again, it's just, it's just a phenomenal way to get the message out. So, um, you know, like I mentioned, I, I could go in front of a rotary group and talk to about 20 people you know, okay, that's, that's great. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I can get on your podcast or even a lower level podcast. that doesn't have a lot of listeners, but you know, they're more likely to have 50 to hundred, 200 listeners. So, Hey, they're <laughs> automatically your, you know, your influence is spread from a, being a podcaster standpoint. It's so easy. You know, it's so easy to do this. It's so easy to have these conversations that, you know, I don't know why you wouldn't want to do it, but it's also so much easier for your listeners to listen to a podcast while they're driving, while they're working out, while they're, you know, whatever they're doing. It's it's a whole lot easier than having to watch a video or try to read through something, you know, see a topic you want to hear from this podcast or you listen to that podcast regularly. Boom, there it is. Listen to 15, 20 minutes, half an hour of it while you're, you know, particularly driving or working out. Man, that's that's easy to do. Two things at once. You get some valuable insight go, go from there. So it's just a, it's just an incredible medium that more people need to, uh, to explore. Yeah. You, you hit the nail right on the head. And I, I really believe that the interview is something in vogue. Like people are coming back to journalism. People are coming back to paying attention to the story and people are coming more than ever, they're realizing that they can build lifelong connections with people if they pay attention to them. <laughs> and, and seriously, that's what this format provides to people is it provides them the opportunity to showcase somebody else's um, story. It gives them the opportunity to showcase somebody else's uh, what they're enthusiastic about. And everybody wants to be seen and everybody wants to be heard. And that's what I've learned over doing nearly 850 interviews in the past three years, I learned that everybody um, is enthusiastic when they're asked to show up and when, <laughs> when they get a chance to do something that makes them feel featured. And I think that that's so important because your message is going to help some people. And the, the, you know, you said it could be a, a, a podcast that not a lot of people listen to, but the person that does that work to produce that show they feel like they're doing something positive and contribution True. and whether they have 50,000 listeners an episode or a hundred listeners an episode, the contribution that they're providing is something that they believe in. And I think that that's what changes the, the platform is it's not just a recording anymore. Now we're disseminating this information to multiple platforms. Now we're creating micro content based on this. Now we're giving assets to the people that we're creating shows with and they're sharing that. So I think that the podcast platform has so much um, use. It's so user friendly. Like you mentioned, the end user is the one that benefits. <laughs> they get a chance to listen to something passively. Um, they can watch it on YouTube. They can listen to it on their favorite streaming platform. So I think that that's something it's become so user friendly. The market is exploding right now. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, user friendly. That's that's what I would, the term I was trying to use. But yeah, user friendly. Like you said, it's just incredibly user friendly. And, you know, it gets people something to talk about. And I think that when you're saying, hey, man, I'm getting featured on this person's show. That shows your position in the marketplace too. 
And I think that that's something really cool. I'll actually have to talk to you off camera and find out how you positioned yourself to so many shows because I want to be featured on 30 shows too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll give you the scoop. <laughs> give me, give me no sugar coating. <laughs> <laughs> So this next one is less of a business question, more of a personal question. What would be one thing about yourself that you would improve if you could and why? Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've struggled for, you know, really my adult life of just keeping confidence up and then, and staying positive. Um, just being real. Um, and I, you know, I can control it a lot better now, but you know, and I, and I suspect that most everybody maybe has at least a little bit of this where you have your down moments and whatnot, but, (laughs) um, but it's just something that, you know, I know how to, I know I recognize it. I know what to do about it. So I don't necessarily keep myself from dipping down, but the downs aren't as down and I get, get myself going in the right direction a lot quicker now, but, um, it's a, you know, I won't say a daily struggle, but it's, you know, it's a weekly struggle. That's something I need to stay on top of and stay very focused on, um, eliminating, you know, that kind of that downward spiral because it, it can happen very quickly if I allow it to. What are some of your strategies that you use to curb that? I, I read daily. Um, so I'm, I'm either reading inspirational, informational, motivational information. So that helps tremendously. Um, affirmations, it probably, if there was one thing that I say that helps me the most, it's affirmations. Um, and just just keeping those running through my mind, particularly when I feel like I'm having a down moment, just running those affirmations through my mind and build myself back up. Um, that That's been hugely important for me. You know, listen to in, inspirational, motivational items, podcasts, audiobooks, whatever the case may be. And then I'm a I'm man of faith, so certainly my prayer time and and spending time in the Word helps tremendously too. And focusing on that, so um, those strategies together help me tremendously. And again, it, it's still there, but to minimize it is what I've I've been able to do. I guess this is a question that we didn't prepare for you, but it it takes me to that like next follow-up is time management. Um, I know that you are managing so much in your personal life. How do you block that? And how do you find production time? And how do you find like this downtime? And how how do you actually like time manage? Um, Get up early is one of the the keys. Um, Get up early you know, getting, getting my prayer and my, my uh, word time. And then my reading time, that's all done. First thing in the morning, hit the gym, do my workout every day, um, get cleaned up. And then I'm, I'm much more productive in the morning. So I get all that out of the way by, Oh, seven thirty eight AM and then hit the, you know, hit the business realm. So, and I'll be productive to, I try to from about eight till noon or eight till two, in the afternoon, because I know after two, I'm, I, I get lethargic and tired. I'm not as focused. So I try to try to eliminate anything going on from about two to six or seven in the evening. And then in the evening time, seven, eight, nine, I can spend another hour or two doing, uh, doing work and, and business as I prepare for the next day. But that's, that's how I block my day to, to uh, really to help me be as productive as I possibly can. And I think that that is the chemistry of life is when people find out what their triggers are and how they fall off track and what some of their, you know, challenges are. And then they learn how to stay motivated and structure their time wisely. And I think that a lot of people just don't know how to do that because right now we're hyper distracted. You know, we have 25 apps looking at us every 10 minutes. Um, We have, you know, books that we're supposed to read. We have calls that we're supposed to schedule. We have emails that are coming in and instant messages and text messages. Like, I don't know how anybody gets anything done anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I agree. And I, you know, I have my moments, I have my squirrel moments probably every day, you know, email or text or whatever the case may be. But I, I, I work off a to-do list every day. So, 
the, the night before I've got my three or four things, top things that I need to get accomplished. And that, that's what I'm hitting first thing in the morning when I get in front of the computer or where I'm at. Let's let's get these knocked out and uh, knowing that that's going to help me uh, not only be more productive, but it's going to help me move forward as far as uh, what I'm trying to accomplish and, you know, goal wise or business wise. Yeah. And I think that this is a really uh, powerful conversation we're having today because a lot of the people that are listening to this are chiropractors and they're like probably thinking, how can I block out my time to be productive in the office? What do I need to do for marketing? How can I grow a business? And back to your um, first part of the conversation is customer service. How can I perform great customer service and not feel hyper distracted with all this other communication that comes into me? Because there's no guideline. Like if I wanted to send you a message at like 2 a.m., I could send you a message at 2 a.m. and you'll wake up to that. Like I can't tell you how many days I wake up to 20 instant messages on my Facebook messenger chat. And I'm like, oh, gosh, (laughs) what just happened to me? But right. you also have to be considerate and you can't be like, oh, I'm not going to respond back to that person the way that I want to be responded to. So now you're time blocking off of two hours to right. send text messages, emails, and instant message messages, and now Instagram messages. Yeah, you're already behind the eight ball, you know, first thing that you haven't even done anything because you've got 20 messages to take care of. So yeah, I, I hear you. And the last thing you want to do is throw throw a thumbs up to everybody because you know how that makes you feel on the other side. (laughs) That's right. So I don't send thumbs ever. (laughs) I have a no thumb policy. No thumb. I I am with you, Luke. I generally, I don't. So because it it, it translates to some other finger. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Touching on the to-do list. Another fun thing you can do that I do is I have an accomplishment journal where after I have taken something off the to-do list, I put it in the accomplished list. And what I found is that I'll start with a to-do list that's this big, but somehow I've accomplished this much. That is an awesome idea. I may have to try that. So I like that. I I just have, I use sticky notes. In fact, here's my to-do list right here for today. Um, there's, you know, there's probably 20 things on there, but the top three are what I, you know, those have to get finished before I, in theory, move on to the rest of them. But I like that idea of putting the accomplished list down too. So instead of just scratching it off, so look at what I've actually done. In our, in our men of iron unit, we call that a brag journal. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, we write down all the things that we accomplished for that day and we review that stuff. So I think that that's a really cool um, motivational hack for people that want to find out how they can actually maximize their efforts throughout the day and not feel like they're just like swimming around with like tasks. Yeah. Um, I'm that guy. I swim around with tasks all day and I'm like, get away from me. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get away from me. <laughs> I changed no, I the name that. just because I don't like the word it, brag. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that this is helpful to people and having these like open conversations about like what gets you going, what your challenges are, how Luke builds massive uh, production, how I feel like I always have things like constantly like coming at me. Like that's a skill set too. Like when you have so much coming at you, how do you like make a priority list? Well, you know, it's really a question of, and there's a couple of books that come to mind that that helped me. One is the the one thing, and I can't remember the author um, just left me, but that that's a great book. And being able to focus on the the one thing, you know, it's the eighty twenty rule is really what it amounts to. You know, what what can I focus my attention on that on the twenty percent that is going to create the eighty percent of the impact on my business or the success of my business? Those are the things that you really need to be focusing on. You know, the vast majority of people. You know, and I'm guilty of this through the years to some degree, too, is we focus on the 80 percent of stuff that only plays 20 percent of the impact on our on our on our success in business. And we need to flip that really, you know, narrow down, think about, get a better understanding of what are the things that are really going to help me uh, accomplish what I need to accomplish and then focus specifically on those first and foremost before before anything else. So what would be some advice that you would give to either a fresh faced chiropractic student or maybe another practitioner who's struggling in business right now? What would be some 
timely advice that you could give our listeners? <clears throat> well, two things. You know, obviously, I'm going to champion the cause of of improving customer service, um, and and to me. Having good customer service, better customer service, improving customer service is going to enhance everything that goes on in the business. Um, you can be the best practitioner, the best chiropractor, you technically sound, but if the customer service is off, it's going to detract from your business. So that that's an area that I would really focus on. You, you just can't go wrong with improving your customer service because your customer service, you're making your patients, your customers, your clients whatever word you want to put in there, you're making them feel valuable and everybody wants to be made to be feel valuable. So that's, that's how critical that that, that is. The second thing that I, I would tell a young practitioner or somebody that's struggling or a new chiropractor coming out of school is get a coach. And not necessarily me. I'm talking Fred Schofield. I'm talking AMC. There's a lot out there. Find one that's, you know, you can afford one that's, you know, that's been recommended, whatever the case may be, but find a coach. And I, you know, when I first got out of school, chiropractic school, my group of friends, we were all like, oh, we can do this. We, we know what we're doing. We, we never thought about having coaches. And all of us struggled when we first got out of school. Um, and you know, we learned from that, obviously, and, and move forward with it. But a coach would have saved us a whole lot of money, time and frustration. Um, and that that's the key. Yeah, it seems expensive at the at the onset. But really, if they look at it objectively, it's going to save them, like I said, time, money and frustration moving forward. If they'll learn from somebody how to do it right, coming out of the gate and move forward in a, in, in a correct manner with the good foundation. I know you touched on this and I think that you're so right about the coaching. Um, but here's the other side of the coaching. The person that's being coached has to be willing to do what is necessary. And the person that's doing the coaching has to be interested enough to, in order to give good action to do to the person that's the mentor or the mentee. So I think there's a lot of chemistry that goes involved with that too. And it's not like you're going to hire a coach and right out of the gates, they're going to be able to, I don't see this because I've, I've hired coaches and I haven't seen somebody being able to like jump inside Jim Chester's brain and say, do this. And you're going to be like the most effective human. Um, I think that it has to be very symbiotic it does. and there has to be enough interest from the coach to be able to tell that person, what is that one thing and go do that. And sure. I think that that's sometimes missed because when somebody becomes a coach, I think that they're inundated with too much um, connection with people and they try to spread themselves too thin. And that basically almost disqualifies them from being a good coach. And I think that you just have to be careful of how quickly you grow and you being on the coaching side of this, I'm sure you've seen that. Oh, absolutely. So, and like you said, there's got to be that synergy between the you know, coach and, and those being coach. And, you know, the, the one being coach needs that, they have to have that right attitude. You know, one, they have to have that trust and that relationship with the coach, but they have to have the willingness and the, uh, you know, humbleness to say, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. I need help. I'm going to listen to them, implement it and move forward. And that's, you know, moving when I, when I was actually coaching chiropractors and, and, and again, going back to me pointing fingers at me when I first got out of school too, I didn't know enough to know what I didn't know. So meaning, you, you know, a coach could have approached me, but I, I doubt I would have worked with them because again, I didn't, you know, I thought I'd had all the answers and I was so far down that, you know, I didn't even know that I, I didn't have one answer. So there's <laughs> gotta be some, you know, you, you finally have to almost get to that, that breaking point or hit the bottom of the, you know, the barrel of geez, I don't know what I'm doing. I need help type situation. And that's where that really promotes that attitude from those being coached that I need help. Please help me. What, what do I need to do? I'm on board with whatever you tell me. Yeah. I think that that's so important. And I know we've talked a lot of personal experience. We've talked a lot of theory. We've talked a lot of things, but if you were to say, Hey, here's three to five things you can do to improve your customer service for people to have some takeaways. What would those be? You betcha. Simple things. First of all, smile, 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 smile. A lot of people don't smile and they don't smile all the time. So this, what I told my staff is 
your smile is part of your uniform. So as soon as we unlock the door and those patients are coming in, I want you smiling. A smile is a universal welcome. It, it puts people at ease immediately. It says, hey, we're here for you. So smiling is a, a simple idea. Second thing is I call it book ending the experience. So if we're in a chiropractor's office, patient walks in and the staff greets him and, hey, glad, glad to see you. Sign in, you know, whatever you need to do. We're going to be right with you. They're excited. You know, they make that great first impression. Well, where a lot of businesses, including chiropractors, fall off is making the a better and enthusiastic end uh, perception for them. So when that patient is left when they're, or when they're about to leave and they, they're paying and leaving, hey, tell them, I appreciate you. Thanks for coming in. We're excited to see you when you come in next week or whatever the case may be. But leave them on a positive note. Book in that experience. Be positive on either end of it. When they leave the office, that's the last impression they're leaving with. So you need to make it it positive as well. Don't and just give them a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> one last thing that is so simple is using, I call it manners or use it, being polite, but using please, thank you, you're welcome in all forms of communication. On the phone, face to face, email, and texting. Texting is, you know, it's huge with businesses now. Text a reminder for an appointment or for a survey, but slip in, please, and thank you, and you're welcome in those, uh, in every form of communication. Again, it just it it makes the the other person feel respected and valued when you do that, and it's so simple to do. You know, it doesn't seem like it would be that that important, but it really is. And here's something I, I really appreciate you sharing that. Uh, it's going to make me better as a communicator because um, something I've learned working with other people is complete cycles of action. But when you complete cycles of action, a lot of times it's this very small communication paradigm. And when you complete cycles of action, I've also seen the other side of the spectrum where somebody sends me like a, a library full of like a text and appreciations. I'm like, ah, <laughs> but I also think that it's we have to understand that there's a certain etiquette to complete a cycle act of action for being uh, not only the greeting, but the bookend. And I think that that's something that's so important for people's businesses on every level. And how many times have you talked to somebody? They're like, hey, I'm going to send you something. And they send you 25 articles. And you're like, oh. <laughs> so I also think that there's an overload moment of being helpful. And I think there's an overload moment of being too conversational at the back end. So I think we just have to learn what etiquette is for a cycle of action of communication from the greeting to the handling to the book end. And I think that throughout our conversation today, you might become better. I might become better. Luke might become better. And our listeners will definitely learn some takeaways on how they can communicate better with all prospects and all clients and be able to become a better customer service rep for their personal brand and their personal relationships. I, I agree. So like you said, I know I've learned from what we've talked about. So, and I, I appreciate it. Thanks for, again, thanks for the opportunity, guys. I, I greatly appreciate it. And, and I love what you're doing for the pr profession. Just keep it up. So the book is called Define and Deliver Exceptional Customer Service. You can get that at drkellyhenry.com. Dr. Kelly, are there any other promotions you have or websites you can send people to for anything else? Or anything we didn't ask you? I, th I think we covered everything as far as asking uh, drkellyhenry.com. Uh, you can check out my programs. Um, my programs are designed to help a business basically serve better to sell more. That's, that's the whole idea. Um, businesses, whether it's chiropractic or any service-based businesses, we focus on getting customers, clients, patients, but we lose sight of keeping those clients and customers and patients. And that's what my programs are designed to do is to improve customer service, to help keep more business in your business, because that's where exponential growth and profit comes from. So if you go to my website, you can see my programs. You can set up a call. We can talk about if, if uh, what I do is going to fit with you and, and I can help you out. We can move from there. Awesome. Well, thank you for being our guest today. Um, I've got so much to take away from this episode with you today. Um, I think you improved Luke and I's ability to understand customer service on the interview aspect of this. So 
Um, it, no, it's been great. And um, for from a seasoned interviewer to somebody that's been on our show twice, um, it's been a real honor to have you on and to be able to have you on our second episode together. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, those comments, Jim, and and the honor is all mine to be on your show. So I, I again, I love the the influence you have and what you're doing for the profession, both you and Luke. And so thank you so much for that. And again, the the pleasure and honor is all mine to be on this show. So thank you for the opportunity again. Oh, well, thank you, Dr. Kelly, and a few listeners at home want to run a podcast just like us. Head on over to CairoHustleMasterclass dot com, get your full training, and you could be up and running just like Cairo Hustle. Dr. Kelly, thank you so much for being our guest today, and we want you to enjoy the rest of your afternoon. You too, guys. Thank you so much. Look forward to connecting soon. Will do. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.